This video will walk you through the basic configuration of the TopServer IEC 6870-5104 Ethernet driver. This driver acts as a master to provide connectivity to RTUs, IEDs, and other slave devices supporting the IEC 6870-5104 protocol. First, click to add a channel. A channel represents a communication medium from the PC to an external device. A channel can be used to represent a serial port, a card installed in the PC, or an Ethernet socket. A channel and a device driver are closely tied. Only devices that the selected driver supports can be added to that channel. Give your channel a friendly, meaningful name. I will call the example channel IEC Ethernet. Click Next and choose the IEC 6875104 master driver from the device driver dropdown. The enable diagnostics box can be left unchecked for now, but you can always go back and check this after the channel has been configured when troubleshooting communications. Click next and choose the appropriate network adapter you want to use for communications. This can be left at default if using the default adapter for this operating system. Click Next to review the right optimization settings. These should be left at default when setting up your project. If you find you need to change them later, you can always go back and modify them after the channel has been configured. Click Next to review how the driver will handle non-normalized floating point values. This can usually be left at default. Click Next to set the IP address of your device or gateway. This will be entered as the destination host. The destination port can usually be left at default, since 2404 is considered the recommended port for this protocol. If your device is using another port besides the recommendation, you would enter that here. The connect timeout should be left at default. Again, it can be changed later if needed. Click Next to review the final settings for the channel. The calls of transmission size specifies whether or not the master's originator address will be included in the messages to the IEC device. When two octet is selected, the originator address is included, and when one octet is selected, the originator address is not. The default setting is two octet. The originator address is used by a dual mode device to route responses from a slave to the correct master. The valid range is 0 to 254. The default setting is 0. The remaining settings can usually be left at default. Click Next to review the channel configuration and choose Finish. You will now see your configured channel in the project. Next, click to add a device. Give the device a friendly, meaningful name. I will call the example device IED1. Click Next to review the scan mode. We recommend leaving this setting at default. Click Next to define whether or not to use auto demotion to take unresponsive devices out of the polling cycle for a specified period. We recommend leaving the setting unchecked during the initial configuration. You can always go back and change this if you find you need it. Click Next to specify the time zone for the IEC device, whether or not you want to respect daylight saving time, and the time synchronization method. The time synchronization is disabled by default but can be set to absolute to specify a certain time for synchronization to occur, or set to interval to specify how often the synchronization should occur. We will leave this disabled for our example. Click Next to set the communication parameters. Most of these settings can be left at default, but I will highlight two significant ones. For the common address, you will need to enter the device or station address. The valid range is 0 to 254, or 65,534, depending on whether the common address size setting was set to one or two octets in the channel configuration. The default setting is three. Devices within a channel must have unique common address pairs because the master must have unique sector references within a channel. Playback events specifies whether or not event playback is enabled. When disabled, all tags associated with event playback will report the most recent data, and no data will be buffered. When enabled, events are played back based on the buffer size and playback rate. The default setting is enabled. Click Next to review the device configuration and choose Finish. You will now see your configured channel and device in the project. 
Tags can either be accessed dynamically from your client application or using static addresses in the server. To create a static tag in the server, click to add a static tag. Give the tag a friendly, meaningful name and enter the desired address. If you need help determining the correct address and format, click the Hints button. This will provide you with the address formats compatible with the server. You can add an optional description for the tag if desired. The data type and client access can be set in the Data Properties window. Due to OPC specifications, the tag scan rate setting is only applicable for non-OPC clients that do not abide by a group update rate in the client. Click OK and you will see your newly created tag in the project. For rapid static tag configuration, the CSV import and export operations can be used. Any configuration settings not specifically addressed in this video can be found in the help file. To view the help file, go to Help, Server Help, and the Configuration. Configuration settings pertinent to all drivers can be found in the Server Help section. For information on a specific driver, navigate to the desired driver and click Launch Driver Help. This concludes our basic configuration of the IEC 6870-5104 Ethernet driver. As always, our support team is available to help you every step of the way. If you find you have any questions or need any assistance, please do not hesitate to contact us.